June 7, St. Robert of Newminster. In 1132, Robert was a monk at Whiteby, England, when news arrived that 13 religious had been violently expelled from the Abbey of St. Mary in York. They were expelled for having proposed to restore the strict Benedictine rule. He at once set out to join them and found them on the banks of the Skeld near Ripon, living in the midst of winter in a hut made of hurdles and a roof of turf. In the spring, they affiliated themselves to St. Bernard's Reform at Clarevox, and for two years struggled on in extreme poverty. At length, the fame of their sanctity brought another novice, Hugh, Dean of York, who endowed the community with all his wealth, and thus laid the foundation of Fountains of Abbey. In 1137, Reynulf, Baron of Morpth, was so edified by the example of the monks at the fountains that he built them a monastery in Northumberland called Newminster, of which St. Robert became abbot. The holiness of his life, even more than his words, guided his brethren to perfection, and within the next ten years three new communities went forth from this one to become centers of holiness in other parts of England. The abstinence of St. Robert in refractory alone sufficed to maintain the mortified spirit of the community. One Easter day his stomach weakened by the fast of lent could take no food and he at last consented to try to eat some bread sweetened with honey before it was brought he felt this relaxation would be a dangerous example for his subjects and sent the food untouched to the poor at the gate the plate was received by a young man of shining countenance who straightway disappeared at the next meal the plate descended empty and by itself to the abbot's place in the refectory proving that what the saint sacrificed for his brethren had been accepted by christ at the moment of robert's death in the year eleven fifty nine saint goderic the hermit saw his soul like a globe of fire borne up by the angels in a pathway of light and as the gates of heaven opened before them a voice repeated twice enter now my friends enter now my friends reason and authority prove that virtue ought to be practiced but facts alone prove that it is practiced and this is why examples have more power to move our souls and why our individual actions are of such fearful importance for others as well as for ourselves